And did you see Bonaparte? Well, I did, sir, but only for an instant. And what was in this package? I've no idea. Well, you have an honest look about you, don't you? Because everything, in every particular, I say is true, sir. Well, now... Think carefully before you answer this. Is there anything you have about your person which might incriminate you in any way? I have this letter, sir, addressed to one General Noitier. Repeat that name, please. Noitier? General Noitier? Are you acquainted with the gentleman, sir? Have you had any personal dealings with General Noitier? None whatsoever until a week ago. I, I never even heard of him. Right. The letter, please. Sir? Have you opened this letter? Tampered with it in any way? No, sir. Would it surprise you to know that this letter proves that there is a very real plot to restore the traitor Napoleon as Emperor of France? What? Hmm? As well as timely warnings to those closely associated with the intrigue? It would, sir, completely. Oh. Here is what I am going to do for you, Dantes. First of all, I'm going to burn this letter. A letter you are going to forget you ever had in your possession, is that clear? It is forgotten already. And then I'm going to instruct the guards to take you to the Chateau d'If, where... The Chateau d'If? Where you will be held for your safety until I have discovered who has acted so mendaciously against you. Oh. I shall get to the bottom of this, Monsieur Dantes. You have my solemn word on it. Sergeant. Sir. I'm finished with this prisoner. Very good, sir. You give my compliments to the governor of the DIF, and you tell him that in this regard, NATBT, he'll understand. NATBT. Very good, sir. Now, the sergeant here, he'll take good care of you. Thank you, monsieur. Thank you. We shall meet again under more pleasant circumstances, I hope. I hope so, too, sir. I hope so, too, sir. Perhaps I might offer you some refreshment, Monsieur de Villefort, some brandy? As the Count stares at the thin-drawn man who stands so censoriously before him, it seems inconceivable that he could ever have been so naive as to... Thank you, no. ...believe him. Then perhaps, as an officer of the law, you can help me with an abbreviation I came across some years ago in an old legal document. Yes, yes. Gladly. Trust him. N A. T B T. Ah, it was an informal code we used years ago. No action to be taken. It was generally used to signify men who were perceived to be dangerous political activists. Anti-monarchists. Bonapartists. Bonapartists, especially. Fanatics to a man, everyone. Thank you. You have been most helpful. Am I to understand that you do have some interest in our judicial system, after all? Although I consider myself to be above all human law, yes. Above all law? <laughs> I'm not sure I'm quite with you. There are certain men whose personalities have been so fashioned by fate and destiny, men who accurately perceive the sacred truth of justice and answer only to the greatest and most magnificent judge of all. And who might that be? Why, God himself. And do you consider yourself to be such a man? I do. <laughs> I see. I see that it amuses you to make sport of me. Not by any means. Well, I thank you once again for the great service you did my wife and child, sir. It's been a most fascinating conversation. Good evening. There is one more thing I would ask. Your father... Yes. His name is Noitier, isn't it? General Noitier. May I ask why this is of interest? I heard he was a brave and noble commander. Your information is correct. For a Bonapartist. The somewhat misguided political views of my father are well documented. But you do not share them? And never have. Is that why you change your name? Is there something that you wish to share with me, Count? Only that I hope... You and your wife will do me the honor of visiting me at my country house. We shall await your invitation keenly, Count. And as the Crown Prosecutor stiffly bows his head... Monsieur. That same, once fearless, General Noitier, father to de Villefort, 
loyal supporter of the long dead Emperor Napoleon, is being fed some cold soup. Oh, it's no good you kicking up so, Father. Can't let you starve, can we? Yeah. And it's parsnip, your favourite. From a wooden spoon. No. <laughs> he who, as we know, most honoured friends... Stroke or no stroke, you're not above good manners, General. ...sits alone in a dusty attic. No. <laughs> Very well, then. We shall wait until Monsieur de Villefort returns from visiting the Count of Monte Cristo, and you can tell him why you have refused to eat. Christo. I just told you all about him. The man who saved young Edward and I from certain death. Do you not listen to a word I say? Zerky. Your granddaughter is in her room. Chin. Some soup first. There it goes. Well done. And open. I must say, the house will certainly be quiet when Valentine is finally off our hands and married. Married? Yes, General, married. <coughs> to Franz Depigny, no less. Depigny? Such a well-connected family. Aristocratic. What? <coughs> oh, 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 monsieur. <coughs> Liar! Liar! I shall fetch your son, I shall. <coughs> Valentine! <coughs> Valentine! You can explain your disgusting behaviour to him. Secrets. <coughs> Paris is all about secrets. Valentine! Over here, my love! And in the quietest corner of De Villefort's somewhat gloomy garden, another... I have counted the hours. ...is to be discovered on either side of an old garden wall. If only I could hold you in my arms and kiss you. Don't say it, my love. Oh, then let me climb over. No, you mustn't. Listen, Maximilian. There is a terrible rumour. What rumour? I am to be engaged to Franz Depigny. Depigny? You know him. I do, and he's a fool. Valentine! There's my stepmother. You must go. I cannot bear it. Where are you, you silly girl? Go! Until tomorrow, my love. There you are. Did you not hear me calling? I was just on my... In future, will you come when you are called for? It's no good you pulling faces, Father. Valentine is to be married to Franz d'Epigny, and there it is. Lawyer! Lawyer! What? Lawyer! A lawyer? Why? Disinherit! Disinherit who? Valentine! You would destroy your granddaughter's one opportunity for security and social advancement. Lawyer! The Depigny family have one of the oldest and most respected names in France, and weren't you and he allies? <laughs> That's enough, Father! <laughs> now, your wishes regarding who inherits this family's wealth will, of course, be respected and honoured. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Valentine! Valentine! <laughs> Come. You wanted to see me, Father? I did, Valentine. For some time now, your stepmother and I have considered your, your future happiness. Thank you, Father. And to that end, we've had the good fortune to engineer a match between yourself and the Depigny family. I see. Ah, I wanted to be the first to share this happy news with you. Uh, may I ask if you are resolved on pursuing this course of action? You may, and I am. Are you crying? No, Father. Oh, dear child. It is for the best, I promise you. Come. Have you told Valentine the good news, Gerard? I have. Is it not good news, Valentine? It is, I suppose. You suppose? You, you may go to your room, Valentine. Thank you, Father, Stepmother. Straight to bed, mind. <laughs> She's so willful. <laughs> you might be kinder, Eloise. 
find her? Well, the girl has a lot to adjust to. We should arrange a meeting with Monsieur Depenier just as soon as we can. Agreed. Perhaps after we have visited the Count of Monte Cristo at his new house in Otoy. At? He told me about it this afternoon. Apparently it's haunted. Sorry, his house where? Otoy. Rue de la Fontaine. Story goes that these two young lovers buried their baby in his garden and one can still hear its ghostly cries in the night. He told you this? What a remarkable character the Count is. Which number, Rue de la Fontaine? Which number? Yeah, which number? <laughs> oh, no, I want to look to, why can't you just answer the question? 28. D didn't your late wife's parents have a house at that address? They did. Yes, they did. Are you all right, Gerard? Look as though you've seen a ghost yourself. Oh, forgive me, Eloise. It's, it's been a long and difficult day. Are you sure you don't want me to call no, a doctor? I am positive, thank you. Thank you. Extraordinary, the coincidence, no? Extraordinary. <laughs> In The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, adapted by Sebastian Bonchkevich, The Count is played by Ian Glenn, Ede by Jean Lapotere, the younger Ede, Amber Rose Reva, and Abbe Faria, Richard Johnson. Baron Donglar is Toby Jones, Hermine Donglar, Stephanie Racine, Fernand de Morcerf, Zubin Varla, and Mercedes de Morcerf, Josette Simon. Gérard de Villefort is Paul Rees, Eloise de Villefort, Kate Fleetwood, General Noirtier, Carl Johnson, Valentine, Lizzie Watts, and Albert, Will Howard. Jacopo is played by Joe Sims, Max Morel by Adam Nagaitis, and The Coachman by Paul Stonehouse. The music is by David Tobin and Jeff Megan, and the directors are Jeremy Mortimer and Sasha Yevtushenko. Next Sunday, the Count of Monte Cristo tightens his grip on Baron Danglars and the Crown Prosecutor. After the news, James Nocte presents Book Club. There was a neighbour who, rather than go on benefits, she would sell everything in the house. Seventy years after the foundations for the welfare state were laid. The difficulty with the welfare state is that if somebody else is funding your lifestyle, you think that's just great. We have to watch every single penny we spend. It's hard work being unemployed. It sounds so silly, but it is hard work. A second chance to hear BBC Radio 4's special programme looking at the state of welfare. Tonight at 8 o'clock. <laughs>